Hello everyone and welcome back to Liberty Park Music for another Piano Etudes lesson. For today's lesson we're looking at a piece by the famed composer and Beethoven student Carl Czerny. And this piece may seem a little sparse and even a little easy to begin with, however we're going to have to make some specific choices with our left hand accompaniment and our left hand articulations that are going to make things a little bit more interesting. Let's check it out. Okay, so obviously this piece is in 3-4, giving it a bit of a waltz feel. We have a tempo marking of allegro, indicating that it's supposed to be on the fast side, an opening dynamic of piano, and a key or scale signature of two sharps, telling us it's using either the D major or B minor scales. Clearly, this piece has absolutely nothing dark and somber about it, so we're most definitely using the brighter, happier scale of D major here. In terms of the notes themselves, no doubt the thing that's sticking out to you most are these left hand measures with the two notes right next to each other on the same line. In each case, one of the notes is a quarter note, followed by two other quarter notes as part of the accompaniment, and the other is a dotted half note, which spans the full length of the measure. What this is is a very specific instruction regarding how to play this left hand, and we'll talk about it in detail in a moment. Before that, though, notice that we do have some articulation interest in our right hand part. Lots of staccatos and slurs, and even a few accents, so we'll be doing our best to realize all of that. Okay, let's get into some details. So, let's actually talk about the right hand first. Well, fortunately, we stay in the same C position, um, the same C five-finger position, I should say, for the whole piece. Which is very handy knowledge, I guess literally. And these consecutive thirds that we play... Might be a little awkward at first, but if you play them using a good hand structure, and once you get used to them a bit, they actually feel uh, rather good to play. They're also moving in a direction physically that tends to be easier for our hands, um, instead of, say, going in the opposite direction, starting with one and three and going up the keyboard. It's a little bit harder of a motion than down. Now, make sure you're relying more on your arms and wrists to move and going from the slurred legato first notes to the staccato second beats um, should happen pretty naturally. And you can see that my fingers, when I do this, are only really moving to support the weight of my hand as it transfers between the notes. It's almost like I'm playing like this. but translating that effort into playing the thirds. And then, of course, I have um, a lot of arm motion going on, bouncing off those staccatos. Now, check out that accent in measure four. I wouldn't worry too much about making that a heavy hitter. Um, it ends up sounding a little awkward. I think Cherney wrote it in here just to emphasize the end of this part of the musical phrase and to make sure that the performer was not de-emphasizing the note, uh, diminuendoing it, that is. Thanks for watching this lesson from Liberty Park Music. If you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it, do us a favor, hit that like button. And if you really liked it, share it around. Let your friends and family check it out too. If you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano-related topics, please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com. 
We have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.